So I want to talk today about uh, this development that we did at the university, at the Free University of Berlin. This is our autonomous car. It's called Made in Germany. It's our second autonomous car. We already have a third autonomous car. And uh, this is the topic of my talk, the, talk uh, the car of the future. And this has been work being done by a, by a large team of students and researchers at the university. So first, let me show you the car arriving to this Congress Center. We have been testing the car uh, several, for several months already, since uh, 2010. And uh, that was a very short clip that showed you just the car arriving to, to, to this uh, Congress Center. We have been testing the car for several years, and the idea is that this kind of transportation will change the, the shape of the cities, will change, will change the way that we move uh, in cities. If you look at the 19th century, it was the century of the steam machines. It was the century of transportation using horses. If you look back at the 20th century, it was the, the century of the internal combustion engine and the century of oil. So we were moving, we are still moving cars using oil. The 21st century will be the century of new energies, new kinds of energy, electric cars, and also automatized cars, cars that will be moving around that will transform the way that we work, the way wa that we uh, uh, mo mo uh, mobilize in the city. This is just a, a, a slide that shows you that cheap oil is, uh, is, is finished. Uh, it, it, many countries that used to export oil, this is the, the curve for exports of oils on the 2020, many uh, countries that uh, have been exporting oil for many years, like Mexico, for example, they, uh, will f they won't be exporting oil within the next few years, so we have to go to other kinds of uh, uh, energy sources. So one possibility is using solar energy, wind energy, but uh, we also have to, to save uh, energy. And saving energy means, in the case of transportation, that we need to share the cars. Car sharing is also is something that everybody knows. Car sharing is done in the way that you take the car, then you use the car, leave the car for the next person to be used. But our scenario, and this is what we show here, our scenario is that uh, when you want to go to work or when you go, uh, want to go from the university, in this case, back to home, you just take your cell phone, your mobile device, and you call the car. You call a, a, a taxi, an autonomous taxi. The car picks you up, picks your neighbor, picks your, your co-worker, and drive uh, everybody to the, to the subway or, or, or even, even to home. Then the car, the car doesn't have to be parked. The car continues working. It's delivering transportation services to the city 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The car that we have de been developed uh, was uh, trained, so to say, at Tempelhof Airport. When we started, we needed a, a lot of space in order to, to be safe, in order to do the testing. Um, the car ha is controlled by, by a, a, an iPad or a, a cellular phone. Uh, the mobile device can call the car. We can see all the sensors from the car. We can see the laser scanners. We can see the video cameras. In this case, this uh, PhD student is looking to the video camera uh, on the windshield, is looking what, what the car is doing, and can also uh, stop the car, can give commands to the car, can tell the car to go to another place in the, in the airport. Um, these kind of cars, they need a lot of sensors. This is our second generation car. Here you see that we use uh, uh, laser scanners, which are embedded in the body of the car. They, they are around the car. Those are, uh, those are the Lux laser scanner that you see in the bottom. And then you see a laser scanner, rotating laser scanner on top. That's a laser scanner which is sending 64 pulses of light uh, instantaneously. And then uh, the unit is rotating, is measuring the distance to objects in the, in the city and is delivering a 3D picture of everything that's around the car, 70 meters around the car. Um, the car needs to know where it is. So we need uh, GPS, a GPS unit. We need GPS uh, positioning. Uh, this unit that we use is much more accurate than the ones that you use in your cars. Uh, those can have a, a precision of 10 to 15 meters in the city. We have a precision of 50 centimeters. In the, in, in the city. So the car knows precisely where it is, even the lane where it is when it's uh, navigating a street. Everything is based on, on, on the satellites circling the Earth. 
and uh, the, the electronics and, and gyroscopes and uh, accelerometers take care of computing the position of the car and uh, making all the calculations. Of course, you need a lot of uh, material for doing this. This is the, 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 the material that we use. We have GPS uh, coordinates for the cities in Berlin where we drive the car. This is a view of the, of the car from the computer side, from, from, from the processing, where you see the car and you see some uh, clouds of points uh, coming around the car. Those clouds of points are measurements uh, done by the laser scanner. Uh, the laser scanners have uh, a lot of coverage, as you can see here. Uh, first, the rotating scanner on top of the unit is uh, uh, measuring everything around the car using those 64 rays. There are uh, several other uh, laser scanners uh, in this uh, other car that we have been using also, where you can measure what's in front of the car up to 120 meters ahead so that you can drive on the highway. And we also have laser scanners on the back. And we have uh, uh, also uh, video cameras. So you have to measure the position of cars, pedestrians, and everything in the city. But you also need to look to the, to the traffic lights. You need to look to uh, persons, recognized persons. And this uh, picture gives you an idea of the coverage of the different sensors. We have the rotating laser scanner, 70 meters around, 360 uh, degrees. We have uh, additional laser scanners on the corners or in the front of the car, covering a larger distance uh, uh, for navigation in the highway. We have uh, the video cameras in the, in the windshield covering the front of the car. We have radar. We have a, we have a lot of sensors. It's a, it's, a very, <laughs> it's a very redundant system. It's a very redundant system. We could do with less sensors, but when you do the first prototype, you just throw everything you have and, and, and try to do, to do the system safe so that you can, uh, afterwards, you can simplify the system. You can go back to uh, something that's cheaper. Um, the electronics of the car is in the trunk. So we have um, the positioning system. We have a computer for doing the, the computer vision processing from the video cameras. We have a box for connecting everything. We have the box here, which is uh, receiving the signals from the laser scanners. We have an additional motor for doing the drive-by-wire for activating the steering wheel. We have a communication with the CAN bus of the, of the, uh, of the car. So we have electronics. But uh, the main processing is done by a laptop. The first car that we built, uh, that was in 2006, 2007, had uh, four big uh, computers, four big IBM servers. Um, that's what the, that was the kind of speed that we needed for doing the processing. Now we drive using a laptop because we get enough computing power from that laptop. This is a view of the laser scanner. I used to show you where the laser scanner is uh, embedded in the, in, in, the, in the body of the car on the sides. This is, uh, this is a diagram of how the laser scanner works. But uh, more interesting is to look to a video. This is the rotating laser scanner, which gives you a, a three-dimensional picture of the environment. But more interesting is to look to a video of uh, the actual kind of uh, point, cl point cloud that you get from the laser scanner. These white lines, these white points, are the measurements from the laser scanner. The points marked in red are interesting points from the navigation point of view. So if you want to go on the street and you want to, to drive safely, you, you have to know that, for example, this car is coming behind you. What's the distance uh, uh, to that car? What's the speed? And everything is computed. Uh, this speed and these uh, different uh, positions of the uh, different, uh, different objects in the, on, on, the, on the street or on the highway are computed by the, uh, by the, compute, by the laptop. Now, this is, um, these are the, the video cameras that we are using. So we started with one video camera looking to the, to the street. Now we use five video cameras. We use one central video camera to find the lane, to find the, the white stripes on the, on the, on the street. We use two other video cameras to see uh, pedestrians and to see cars in st using stereo vision, stereoscopic vision. And we use two additional cameras with color to see the traffic lights, to see if a traffic light is uh, on green or on, on red. And this, um, this overview of the navigation software shows uh, you first here the, the, the position of the car. Uh, actually, this is uh, here very near. Uh, to this uh, uh, Congress Center. 
uh, three lanes, the, the car waiting for a, for a traffic light. Here you see the, the, the two pictures from the two cameras, the, the left camera, the right camera, the traffic lights going green, the car is advancing. Here you see the pictures from the stereoscopic cameras, and here the stereoscopic reconstruction, the 3D reconstruction of the world according to what the car is seeing. Um, as you can see from this uh, picture, we have more data than a human can, can manage to, to, to process. A human can only see what's in front, can maybe turn around and, so, and see what's behind the car. Here we have uh, so much information about the traffic around the car that we can count the individual uh, cars. We can see the cars even on the other lanes, on the other three lanes, the lanes coming towards us. Here the car is arriving uh, 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 at an intersection and you can see, uh, that's interesting for us, not, maybe not so much for you, but you can see here all the parameters of the car. We can see what the car is doing, what the car is thinking, so to say. And when we are driving with this car, the car is talking to us. So we, we have a, a speech synthesizer, and uh, w when the car is driving, it's telling the, the human passengers, I'm going to change the lane, I'm going to stop because the, the traffic light is red, so that we know what's going on and we uh, know if we have to take advantage of uh, maybe another intervention. Uh, everything is based on uh, behavior software that makes a plan. First, you have to know uh, if I want to go from A to B, then, then I need a, a plan for the whole city. Then we need a micro plan, what's called the micro plan. That means that we look at alternatives. Maybe we can go um, 50 centimeters to the left, 50 centimeters to the right, that can make the, the right safer. If there is an obstacle in the street, maybe we can just uh, avoid that obstacle by, by going a little to the left. Uh, these alternatives are computed by the laptop, are evaluated, are given a, 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 a certain cost, a cost function, and then we decide what the car needs to do using that cost function. So this is a rough overview of the, of the sensors, the software that we use, the kind of computers that we have installed in, in the car, but uh, I think the proof of the pudding is in the, in the driving. <laughs> and then uh, we have been testing this car since 2010 in Berlin. Maybe you have seen our car driving around the city. We test it uh, in, on a regular basis. And there are only two places in the world where autonomous cars are being tested on the streets uh, on a regular basis. One place is California, the other place is Berlin. So I let uh, the video do the talking and now you will see a video of our, of our car navigating in Berlin. And please uh, turn on the music. Autonomous Labs proudly presents
Thank you very much. This is the car of the future.